an unlawful look at an extraordinary theory of everything. Part B. Relationship between autism and the American demigod Quetzalcoatl. What is the relationship between autism and Quetzalcoatl? After destroying Tenochtitlan in 1521, Hernán Cortés wrote to the Holy Roman Emperor, Charles V, that the Aztecs had been exceedingly gullible. That Spaniard never wrote that Montezuma II, the ninth Tlatuani of the Aztecs, believed that Cortés was the demigod Quetzalcoatl who was coming back from Venus. The events that followed showed that, unlike Montezuma II, Hernán Cortés had absorbed in depth the diabolical menace of the quantum voyage of Quetzalcoatl to Venus, the left side of the figure. Also that the Spanish and the Aztec warriors never understood the transformation attached to the return of Quetzalcoatl from Venus to the Earth, the right side of the figure. That transformation is real. During his fight with an angel in Penuel, for example, diabolical egoism in Jacob became gracious prudence in Israel. Fifty years after the conquest of Mexico, however, the Franciscan friar Bernardino de Sahagún wrote that a discourse that Montezuma II gave Cortés in 1519 included two phrases in which that conquistador was described as the legitimate ruler of the Aztec Nahuatl culture that held together the Mexicas, Acolhuas and Tepanex. Princess Tequipotzin, the eldest daughter of Montezuma II, renamed Doña Isabel, had a child with Hernán Cortés and received a nobility title that lasted until the 20th century. In reality, Cortés conquered Mexico in the 16th century because his quantum malice played with four aces. The classical memory of the carpenter that reconstructed the brigantines by which the Spanish arquebusiers controlled the lake that surrounded the Notitlan and the supplies to that city. A Spanish sailor with smallpox, the European scourge that took away the strength of the defenders of Tenochtitlan, the hatred of 150,000 local allies who cut the supply of fresh water to the Mexican capital, reinforced the Spanish arquebusiers and covered men weakened by the American syphilis and contributed to the massacre of 100,000 Aztecs. And finally, the autistic ignorance of the Mexicas about the malignant embrace of infinite malice in the second attention of Hernán Cortés with total victory in his first attention. When a few Mexica mercenaries entered the Valley of Mexico in the 13th century, 300 years before the arrival of Hernán Cortés, they saw the ruins of Teotihuacán, a city that had been abandoned by its inhabitants about 700 years before. A few Toltec sages who lived in that valley showed the Mexicas three monuments, the Pyramid of the Sun, the Pyramid of the Moon, and the Pyramid that Toltecs attributed to a demigod called Bird Serpent, or Quetzalcoatl in the Nahuatl language. The Mexicas were never taught about the devilish malice of the Mon Quetzalcoatl, shown in the picture above. Neither did the lords of Teotihuacan, considering that in the 6th century of the common era, the hungry of that city burned the houses of their unwise leaders who slept of the way to counter long dry spell. On the same wake, the Aztecs ignored the malevolent alliance between the classical computing fed by the sun god Huitzilipochtli at the center of the figure and the quantum computing of the goddess Koyoshauki, the moon at the left, or the sister that Huitzilopochtli easily decapitates. His ignorance about the theatrical power of the moon would explain why Montezuma II was blind to the treachery of Hernán Cortés, a malicious mastermind. Quantum coherence in the moon, a metaphor for the going voyage of Quetzalcoatl with Lucifer or the morning star in the upper part of the figure may be paired with the works of the devil. Although Cortés was a true devil, 
Now that he, or Montezuma too, had the faintest idea of the benefits of grace in the decoyness of the third attention attached to the evening star in the return of Quetzalcoatl to a renovated locality, shown in the lower part of the figure. The irony of this situation lies in the fact that, before conquering Mexico, the Spaniards who destroyed the sacred text of the Aztecs had had an indirect inkling of the cognitive miracle behind the quantum voyage of Quetzalcoatl, from the first attention in one, through the second attention in two, to the third attention in three. For example, think of the play of coherence and decoherence in the verses Hail Mary, full of grace, our Lord is with thee, and in the verses Holy Mary, Mother of God. I am pointing at the act of walking up and then down the ramp of happy space that autistics lose before they reach the age of three years, fundamentalists lose after the age of three years, and malicious masterminds squander in life before waking up in the emptiness of a schizophrenic hell. What is the meaning of the return of Quetzalcoatl? Start by imagining a serpent or quota to the Aztecs that mirrors on land the legitimate yes, p equal probability equal one of shared knowledge, the left face. Imagine also a bird or the Aztec Quetzal that mirrors the mothering no, probability equal zero, of illegitimate knowledge in the sky, the right face. Now you may consider two propositions. Autistics cannot leave behind the safety of the land of the yes quarter, or the autistic facet of the mind, the left face. They cannot resort to quantum coherence, the red hair. Consequently, autistics cannot deal with the creative relationship between infinity and nothingness in quantum computing, the central face, or Ket1 and Ket0. Second, as with the bird that takes refuge in the sky, unless they take a psychoactive drug, schizophrenics cannot lean on quantum decoherence, the green hair, in leaving behind the sky of the non-quetzal, the schizophrenic facet of the human mind of the right face. Within the first attention driven by classical neural computing, the world of sanity and the world of folly remain separated from the devilish Quetzalcoatl, and they remain separated between themselves, as the world of serpents and winners is separated from the world of birds and losers. Autistics cannot become a Quetzal Quetzal, snake bird and the central face in the figure, and schizophrenics cannot become a Quetzalcoatl. Autistics, schizophrenics, and arrogant leaders lack the prudence wet by the uncertain waters of the world may be, in the world of the second attention driven by quantum computing, the central phase. The second attention is impaired also in schizophrenia because no one can retrace his or her own steps. Schizophrenics are stuck in their own unshared rigidity, thus they like the first the second and the third attention. By contrast, the Quetzalcoatl self hidden in the second attention can use quantum ambiguity to unveil a secret, and the Quetzalcoatl self hidden in the third attention can return to the familiar world in order to share the secret with others. Quetzalcoatl returns for good when we see simultaneously under the red and the green hair of the figure, the three facets of the self, as if they made a fourth face. The return of that demigod is also a metaphor for the return of Christ, Rama, Arjuna, Laozi, Buddha, and the third attention in a person, a family, a town, a country, and the world. I believe that the return of the bird serpent might prevent an individual, a culture, of global civilization from drowning in the paradise of autistic complacency or in the hell of schizophrenic illusion. What hampers autistics from entering quantum computing with ease? Autistics cannot fathom doubt. 
Although they may develop tics that seem crazy to us, the explicit self of autistics or the autistic facet of the normal mind cannot become a serpent bird, literally Kotal Ketzel in seeking our schizophrenic facet. Unlike autistics, Ketzel Kotal in our implicit self is fond of embracing simultaneously our autistic yes facet and our schizophrenic no facet. For example, when we understand the ambiguous meaning of the word may be at the left in the figure. Understanding and helping autistics will lead us to an appreciation of the gracious alliance of the old memories guarded in the explicit self with the new memories brought back by the implicit self and that is progress. The going hyperspace or superspace under the Coenus bridge between Earth and Venus leads to seeing the end of the left bridge in the figure. The vision of a new harmony, however, is not enough. We also need to gather the will to do something good for other travelers just before the right bridge. The grace of the union of vision and will allows us to complete the quantum jump from the bridge of coherence between the Earth and Venus onto the bridge of the coherence between Venus and the Earth. One example of the return of Quetzalcoatl through the third attention are the verses of the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Another example is given by the Quranic verses Wa Asamay Wa Tariki, which can be translated as Allah governs by the heaven or quantum coherence and by the star which shines first at night or quantum decoherence. Taking together the bridge of coherence, the morning star between earth and heaven, and the bridge of decoherence, Tariki or the evening star, may be seen metaphorically as a sea crossed by the ships of faster than light tachyons, a ramp or as a hurricane. Classical locality compels us to travel from here to there at a subliminal speed along the arrow of time shown in the figure. Still, we should not hand out the quantum sea of our rebellious tachyons and porcinous cells filled with questions and critiques to the sterile loyalty of the brilliance and mirror neurons that serve the quantum malice of a tyrant. Because their non-local malice cannot cross the bridge of social decoherence, tyrants end up deflating creation and inflating inflation before dying in the harbor of insanity. In the eye of a non-local hurricane, however, our devilish Quetzalcoatl may embrace sainthood, transform the zero of nothingness into transcendental zero, or the super vacuum in which we renovate subluminous speed through superluminous speed, cross the bridge of the coherence and hand the glory of progress, zero by infinity equal one, to the brilliance of the first attention in the harbor of sanity. Our dreams of glory may reach reality after we become truly mad, or after our funeral, as the artistic souls of George Vizet and Vincent van Gogh would confirm. Still, every artist dreams that the tachyons that fill with grace a wondrous woman will induce his encounter in life with the third attention. Today, the artistic concern DC Comics hides the third attention in the lust of truth of Wonder Woman, Diana Prince or the Princess of the Amazons. Five centuries ago, Leonardo da Vinci hid the secret of the third attention in the smile of Mona Lisa.